In today's video, I'm going to be teaching you how to achieve these four different types of yellow with just dry brushing, contrast paints, and four steps in no time at all. Hello, so today we're going to be approaching how to get these gorgeous four different types of yellow with dry brushing and contrast in pretty much four steps each, four stages, four colors. And uh, a big thing I want to push about this is this is all completely wide open for mixing up. If you want to take the base coat from one and the final stage from another, or do one of them and then glaze it or anything like that, uh, it's a really, really flexible set of uh, kind of just rough rules of thumb that I've put out there and techniques, and you can just take those and do whatever you like with them. Uh, super simple, super fast, really effective, and a great way to do any type of yellow. A lot of people get intimidated by yellow. I don't think it's too much of a problem color as long as you approach it in the right way. So if you like the video, please hit that like button. Please give it a comment, please subscribe, hit that bell notification to be notified about future content from our channel. And with your comments, just let us know what you'd like to see next. Let us know what you'll think of the video, what you do to improve these. Would you weather them? Would you chip them? Anything like that. Uh, we really, really like seeing all of those comments coming through and it's a massive part of why we continue to make these videos for the channel. All right, let's jump in. Believe it or not, what we have here is the foundation for four different approaches to yellow. We're gonna have a kind of cool purpley crisp one we're going to have a more traditional from black one have a very warm kind of creamy uh, bony yellow one and then we're going to have the contrast equivalent they're all going to involve dry brush and they're all going to be about four steps they're going to be super fast and you can just pick whichever one works the best for you so we've got our zero's purple starting point one zero's purple covers amazingly if you've watched any of our videos before there's a very good chance you've seen it i love this paint so you're mixing it uh kind of probably two thirds yellow or even three quarters yellow to one third zeros, working it around our brush. I'm using a large, you could use a medium for this if you wanted, making sure that it's all over the brush and it's not too heavy. And then we're just gonna stipple. And you can kind of pick a light point from here for one, like you could stipple from this direction, have it brighter here and uh, darker on the other side. Let's give that a go and see how it works out. So top right will be our light source on this one and I'm just going to build that up over a few stages. Uh, where we're looking to base coat it, it'll be stippled and then where we're looking to just kind of do um, leave it uh, with more of the previous color in the recesses, we'll be flicking backwards and forwards in more traditional dry brushing. Don't forget you've got your dampening pad there so rather than going back to your color as we're looking to keep things pretty smooth on these can go to the dampening pad instead. We're moving on to a pure Avalanche sunset stage. Now we've got some of the purple on our brush from the previous step, so that's gonna kind of stay there and help uh, promote coherency. Just looking to lightly build this up. And just like the previous one, I'm hitting it primarily from one direction at the start at least, and then as the paint's worked its way off the brush, and you can then dry brush the rest of it a lot more safely. So just build this up, uh, no need to rush. Uh, these colors should play really nicely with each other and we're ready to transition into our bright yellow anytime soon. Flash Gits is quite a lot brighter than Avaland, so we're gonna use a 50-50 mix. At first, working it off our brush and then again, lightly at first, and bearing in mind the direction that we've picked for our light source on this one. Okay, so to finish off, I'm using ivory, but you can use any off-white. Uh, here, I just wanted something that wasn't white-white. Uh, you could use a very light bone or kind of a creamy color. Just dry brushing now, and we're gonna keep it super soft. A little bit of buffing. And it might not be immediately apparent, the difference you make with this, but keep at it and don't rush it. There we go. I might do one final step on that with a really bright one, but that looks brilliant. Kind of a very different yellow there. That purple in the recesses really does work wonders. All right, so finishing touches. You can see on my palette here, I've worked off using my dampening pad, worked off a load of the excess yellow that I had. So this will be a kind of purer color we get. I'll go to a different point of my palette, so I'm not kind of reawakening any of the yellow. And then we're gonna hit this. There we go. Softly catching those edges, 
and then only at the point in which we're happy that the brush isn't going to do anything unexpected uh, we've kind of worked off the immediately kind of easy easy exit paint um, do we grab our shield and hit it with a all over final buff those little scales at the bottom have come out really nicely there we go so that is purple creamy yellow number one okay so on to the contrast version so what we've got here is a wraith bone base and i've got some white paint oh, this brush has had some yellow on it but i'm not too bothered because we're going to be painting this yellow anyway and basically we're just going to do a few stages of all over pre-shading uh dry brushing so don't have to be super precise or anything i'd say this is medium to heavy and it's up to you how much of this you want to do uh, basically we're looking to lay a foundation that the um the contrast paints kind of uh, the, the lighter raised area should punch through even further so the contrast to do even more work than they would do normally. Contrast time, we're going to be using a Yandan yellow. Straight out the pot. You can use contrast medium in this if you wish, if you want to get a slightly more subtle result, but we're not really using a bright yellow contrast paint because <laughs> we want something subtle are we so um just give it a good shape beforehand that's all you have to worry about really and it's up to you how thick you put it on uh, this one if you put it on thicker it does kind of it pushes itself a lot more towards orange so um that's not a bad thing or a good thing necessarily it's just up to you depending on the final effect you're going for one thing that is worth doing is if you once you've put it on, if you take your brush and roll it into recesses, hopefully you can see the effect that's had there, and also mop it up from recesses, you really can control these paints a little bit more than I think a lot of people realise. So if you've got smudges or anything like that, while it's wet, as long as you're working in big fat strokes, I'm using a size 5 here because it's awesome, um, you can really control what's going on. Equally with stuff like this text, like this, this eye looks really nice there. Um, you can specifically drop some contrast on that and you will effectively get bonus shading for free. So it's up to you how much time you want to put on controlling this. You can just do a quick layer all over, you can do a thin glaze all over, up to you, but I really want to get the most that I can out of it. So a couple more seconds spent really does lead to a noticeably different result um, that makes this darker in comparison but we are not going to be hitting it with a final stage or two of dry brushing so it's just going to give us more opportunity for contrast on the insignia on the shield okay now it's dried we can really see it's come out pretty effective like i say it's up to you you could absolutely hit this with another coat of the contrast entirely up to you i'm not going to i'm just going to move straight into flash gets yellow which is a pretty bright one I work off a lot of the excess from my brush. I've already popped it in the dampening pad. And then we're looking for a pretty subtle kind of like buffing. We're not hitting this one from any particular direction. So this is basically there to make sure that the brightest bits look really, really bright and yellow. It's gonna, it's gonna go pretty fast. Um, it's very easy for, particularly that we've got a, a fairly bright base. This color is just gonna land and hold very very nicely to our uh, to our base coat we've got so that's it one more highlight and we're done that is looking awesome okay so to highlight this one i'm going to grab a little bit of screaming skull i'm going to work that into the brush i haven't cleaned this brush that's quite important here i want to keep some of that yellow because um i want to keep the colors coherent and work in really well and then we should just get a brighter version of our previous stage Lovely, super crisp, super warm. That's turned out really well, really fast. We are onto our warm, creamy yellow that we're hoping to make. So we started from Doomble Brown, which is an absolute favorite of mine. So we're gonna take a little bit of Doomble and mix it in with our Avaland. Now you don't need to be as careful with this as you did with the yellow um, because these two kind of gel together super nicely anyway. So take a little bit of Doomble we're probably about one third to two thirds here. And as with the previous one, we're going to start with stippling. So once we've done our stippling, then you can go all over the rest of it and gently buff and build up 
that. This actually is a lovely way to paint leather, by the way, in terms of the two colors that we've used. Um, you end up with a very, very warm, uh, soft looking leather. So I'm going to build this up in exactly the same way I am now. And for us, it's just a matter of kind of patiently going through. It won't take that long at all. You'll feel like it should go faster because you are dry brushing and that makes everyone in the world impatient, it seems. But I kind of stick with it and make sure that you take your time and just build your way up just as we have done with previous stages. Build your way up to a really nice kind of soft all over uh, Avaland having transitioned through the doom ball. Um, so like the previous ones, I'm going to make sure that I hit all of the model with a dry brushing and then there'll be more of the heavy stippling from this kind of top right angle here because that's where we've decided our light's going to be coming from. Okay, so we're now pretty much pure Avaland. Again, I've not cleaned my brush, so that pure Avaland is very different from a, a like a, a virgin untouched pure Avaland. Um, this one though, we've kind of, we've gone through our other colors, we've transitioned pretty fast. So there's quite a bit of that doom ball left on the brush for us. And now we're at a stage where we can transition into our flash kits. Now I'm gonna mix flash kits with Screaming Skull immediately because like I said, I wanna keep this fairly creamy and this will really soften it. Um, so you could probably say this is a one-to-one-to-one -to -one -to -one mix of Avaland flash kits and the bone. So again, we've got the same brush. Uh, we've not particularly paid a massive amount of attention to removing as much paint as I would do normally between stages. I am gonna work this green skull really into the bristles so it will be homogenized a lot with our previous colors. There we go, and a final one. Now softly, I'm gonna use this just to jump up to that final stage. I'm getting this from all directions, not just our direction that we've said is our light source. But generally speaking, I do start my dry brushing there. And that's because that's the bit that I want to be the brightest. There we go. Again, what we were going for, soft and creamy, and very, very warm, looking lovely. You could glaze this with a yellow if you wanted to kind of turbo it up to a brighter version of its color or use a thin version of the contrast. We have our traditional chaos black base coat. Let's see how this goes. We've made our lives a little bit easier with the others. Let's see what we can do with this. So we're going kind of pretty straight down the line vanilla here. That is just going to be with an Avaland base coat to start off with. Okay, so having done the Avaland, we're just going to transition through to our flash kits. We've still got some of the Avaland left in the brush. And I'm going to make sure that there's enough in my dampening pad here. Avaland is a base paint and they do cake a little bit more easily than others. So I kind of pay particular attention to that uh, when working my way through. So this flash kits, we're going to build up uh, just in the same way that we have in previous ones. Again, I'll pick a light source and we'll do quite a lot of stippling. So hit that kind of 50% of it pretty heavily and then work away more lightly over the rest. And then simply it's just we're going to transition through our colors as we have. I'm going to keep this kind of like crisp and sharp. So I'm going to be going for adding the ivory to the flash kits. And as with a lot of our dry brushing, um, you kind of, you start off using stippling more and more a higher percentage, and then you work your way to a higher percentage of kind of generic dry brushing as you go on. Okay, so taking a little bit of the flash kits and a little bit of the ivory on a brush that hasn't been used to base coat several shields in quick succession. So this should end up brighter. Remove my excess, be careful here, and then carefully buff this one up. This is gonna be a much more kind of typical and generic yellow that we head towards. Hit it from all angles and then take more ivory. We're just gonna build up that percentage of our kind of final dry brush highlight color. Always making sure it's worked into every angle of our brush. And then, especially with these final steps, taking care, softly, softly, all the way around the model. There we go. So we're doing some testing here. As you can see, this is one of the amazing things about using a texture palette is I literally have every single color that I've used on all of these shields on my palette. So if I want to test out whether something is a good idea or not, such as glazing with Cassandra yellow, pop some on my brush and then I can test it on 
this color, this bit, test it on a three-dimensional bit, push it into recesses, all that type of stuff. Then I have like a, a directly relevant to real life uh, model um, kind of example here. So what I'm gonna do is take that cast and draw a yellow, dilute it a little bit, and then on the brightest one of our shields or on the darkest one of our shields, depending on what you're going for, I'm gonna go for the mid-tone with the purple in it. I'm just gonna use Cassandra yellow as a glaze. Now you can do this on any of them. There's no reason to uh, like, this isn't tied to one technique and I'm trying to basically arm you with the knowledge of just how much you can do with a filter, which is what I regard this as. It's a super thin glaze and painted over this shield, you can kind of turbo it up to a warmer, more vibrant color. You can mix a bit of purple in with this. That's what it looks like if you mix in uh, a really strong color like voluptuous pink and you get that kind of really really vibrant deep orange you could do any of those you could do it thick you could do it thin and then you could dry brush this again afterwards all of these can be done with that and it's a great way to kind of get a finished result this is really good with red you can paint all of your red highlight it up with um, kind of orangey colors and then glaze it with a deep red and it'll just bring it back into that red spectrum with these equally if things have got a little bit desaturated a little bit less colorful just grab some of this test it on your palette first whack it over your model and you're good to go and we are done. So there's the four shields. I'm really tempted to glaze all of these. I love glazing after dry brushing a lot. It's a really good way to kind of counter dryness or bring new colors into the mix or something like that. And as I mentioned in the intro, it is a super, super flexible set of uh, kind of rough rules of thumb that I've given you here. You could put purple into the recesses of these. You could take any of the first few colors whether that's the Xerus purple or the Doombol brown, you could glaze them back in selectively. You can airbrush over this, wash over this, contrast over this, you get the idea. It's all very flexible. I have chosen particularly helpful recipients. Those shields are badass, they are amazing. They've got gorgeous shapes and they're my favorite part of the entire Lumineth release actually. I really, really like those shields. Uh, I like the spin quite a lot in general actually. They're a bit more simple than the rest of the guys. Um, but yeah, uh, let us know if you like the video. If you do, please give it a like, please comment, please subscribe, hit that bell notification to see about future comment and any future suggestions that you would like us to handle on the channel. Let us know if you saw our previous video, the Black Templar video. I did a little kind of four minutes at the end doing some painting theory. So if you wanna see me at the whiteboard explaining anything, please let me know what it is you'd like me to explain. Uh, painting terms, glazing, uh, color theory, anything like that. I'm super happy to go through anything. The idea of this channel is to kind of arm you guys with a wider set of tools to let you achieve more with your painting and have more fun and enjoy it. So please pop them below. Thanks very much for tuning in. We'll catch you in the next video.